Hey guys, what's up? I'm Josh. And I'm Alicia. And this is Terra Drift, your vegan travel and adventure experts. If you're interested in outdoor adventure, world travel, or veganism, this is the place to get that. So be sure to subscribe for all of our future updates and adventures. So today we're taking a look at two backpacks by Osprey, the Rook and, and the Atmos. Technically speaking, they're different size packs. The Rook is a 65 liter and this Atmos is a 50, but they both come in both sizes and they both come in men's and women's. Uh, the Atmos uh, comes in a women's specific pack called the Aura, it's basically the same. And the women's version of the Rook is actually called the Wren and it is essentially the same pack. Now just because there is a women's specific pack, don't feel like you have to buy it. I personally use the Atmos, which is the unisex pack, and it works perfectly fine for me. So the reason we're comparing these two is that the Rook just came out recently, and it's approximately $90 cheaper than the Atmos. So we wanted to see what are the differences, is the Atmos worth springing for, and are the features of the Rook enough to keep you from missing what the Atmos has to offer? So let's talk about the similarities first. So first, let's look at the harness. Both the Atmos and the Rook have a mesh back panel that allows for breathability when you are backpacking. However, the material on the Rook does feel a little bit cheaper and the adjustability is a little bit different. The Rook features loops at preset intervals so that you can adjust your harness by about an inch and a half to two inches, uh, whereas the Osprey Atmos uh, has a sliding bar that allows a more custom fit. So let's take a look at the side pockets. So the side water bottle pockets are actually laid out the same on both packs, but they're a little bit different. There's a finer mesh stretchy material on the Atmos. Both allow you to slide in a water bottle from the top or behind, which makes sticking a water bottle in and out of the pockets much easier when you're hiking. There are bottom zippered compartments on both packs that also feature on the inside divider. So both packs allow you to stash like clothes or sleeping bag, whatever, in the bottom of the bag, kept separate from everything else if that's what you're into. Now, onto the differences. There are plenty. The layout of the compression straps on both bags is a little bit different. So on the Atmos, there are two compression straps that loop through the back of the bag, like so. And on the Rook, there is a single compression strap on the side. And on the back, there are two compression straps, whereas the Atmos does not have any. Now material-wise, the Rook is made out of polyester. You can tell the difference right off the bat as soon as you look at the bag, and especially when you feel it. The Atmos is made with a nylon that's a lot softer and feels a lot higher quality than the material of the Rook. So the Rook comes out ahead on weight. The, uh, the weight is actually 3.52 pounds. The Atmos starts at 4.48 pounds and goes up to 4.64. Um, depending on the size that you choose, small, medium, or large. It's important to note that the Rook is a one-size-fits-all pack. So the Rook has these padded straps and offers a fair amount of adjustability. But not quite as much as the Atmos, which allows you to slide the harness all the way up or down um, to provide the most custom fit, and the mesh itself is definitely more comfortable and a higher quality material than the Rook. And because it's all uh, kind of integrated into, into one here, which you may be able to see, from the hip belt all the way up to the straps, it really does feel like it's just wrapping around your whole body, which makes carrying heavy loads that much more comfortable. It may not look that much different, but trust me when I say you can definitely feel the comfort difference between the packs when you put them on, even with nothing in them. That brings us down to the hip belt. Now on this particular hip belt, as with all other packs, you do have an adjustable strap. What it doesn't have is an adjustable hip pad. Which is what the Atmos has, which just means it's more adjustable to fit more sizes of people. Um, as you can see, I have it pushed in all the way because I'm a tiny person. But if a larger person were to wear this pack, they can undo this nice Velcro 
and pull it out several inches in order to wrap around a slightly wider waist, which is a nice feature to have. So on the Rook, they've included a rain cover. Which is really cool because the Atmos does not have a rain cover uh, built into the bottom of the bag. You have to actually buy it separately. I'm still trying to figure out why the more expensive the bag, the less likely it is to have a rain cover. Uh, maybe for these reasons. But basically all that means is that you're going to have to buy it separately and it runs you about $25, give or take a few bucks. Unlike the Atmos, the lid on the Rook is not removable. The Atmos is removable. It's called a floating lid, which means this top part you can take completely off. There is a permanent flap underneath, which means if you want to decrease your weight by just a little bit, or say you're going on a day hike and you want to leave some stuff behind at the campground, you can take off the top lid, uh, put some stuff in it, leave it at camp, and go out for the day. I don't usually use that for anything, so whether or not that's a beneficial feature is your call to make. One of the things that the Rook does not have is a front pocket. Now for me, I don't use the front pocket that often, but I know people who do. Like me. I couldn't imagine not having a front stash pocket. I throw everything in here from maps to sunscreen to, gosh, hats, bandanas, snacks, vegan protein bars, you name it, I'm shoving it in the front stash pocket. And because it's stretchy, you can fit a ton of stuff in there. And if I didn't have that, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. But again, that's totally personal preference. So let's talk how much you can comfortably carry in each of these packs. Now with the Rook, you're able to carry up to 40 pounds, which in its price class is actually excellent. Some of the other packs by REI that are on the lower end, uh, they can only carry about 30 pounds. The Atmos, on the other hand, has a weight rating for up to 50 pounds. So if you're not an ultralight hiker or you're going on those long treks and you want to be able to carry a little extra weight and still be comfortable, the Atmos is your boy. Now attachment points. So on the Rook, you have several loops. You have three loops on each side of the back of the bag. So these daisy chain loops allow you to lash things to the bag. But unfortunately, the bag does not have specific loops for, say, an ice axe or for trekking poles. The Atmos does. There are no daisy chain attachment points, but it does have these D loops down at the bottom on each side, as well as bungees at the top to secure trekking poles or other various tools that you might be taking backpacking with you, um, which I find very helpful. Now Allspray does have something called their Daylight Day Pack that you can easily strap to this using the daisy chain system. It doesn't fit as well on the Osprey. So if you like to have that extra little day pack just strapped on the back of your bag uh, for, you know, little day hikes if you're going on longer treks, then the Rook makes that a little bit easier. So wrapping up, if you're looking for a budget pack or you're just getting started and don't want to spend a lot of money on backpacking gear, the Rook is a great place to start. On the other hand, if it's fit and features and comfort you want, you may want to go with the Atmos and the Aura. It is just more comfortable. It costs a little more money depending on what size you want, but for many, it's going to be worth it. One thing we will say is that Osprey in general is just a great brand and they do have something called their almighty guarantee. And all that means is that if there is a tear in your pack, if a buckle breaks, they're going to fix it for free for life. And that goes for any Osprey pack that you get. So rest assured that no matter what pack you get, you can expect to carry it for years to come. We all like different features on our pack. So what it comes down to then, if you're trying to decide between one or the other, is the fit. So be sure to go out to your local outdoor store and try a couple on before you buy. That way you'll know for sure if it fits, if it's comfortable, and if it's gonna work for you. For a budget pack that won't break the bank, the Rook's your guy. For something that's a little bit more comfortable, try the Atmos. 
Thanks for watching, guys. If you didn't like this video, that's okay. But if you did, please like it, share it, and consider subscribing. And for a lot more great content, check out our website, terradrift.com. And you can follow our adventures on Facebook and Instagram, at Terradrift. Thanks for watching, and wander on.